Greetings, my friends. This is once again Dr. Jimmy, and if you look carefully, Bob the Cat, located, sitting on an old printer, sitting on top of that book thing over there, that little cabinet. Oh, she heard me say her name and she looked up. Isn't she adorable? Funny cat. All right. And, first of all, to show off my T-shirt, I always like to do that. Today's shirt is Halloween 2. Uh, the poster artwork for the original film back in 1981. The sequel to John Carpenter's Halloween that had been directed by Rick Rosenthal back in the early 1980s. came out just after I graduated from high school, my freshman year at the University of Hawaii. And I went over one afternoon to Waikiki to see it in the cinema at uh, one of the Waikiki theatres. I lived in Honolulu at the University of Hawaii, obviously, yes. <coughs> Liked the film very much. Always one of my favourites in the sequel, the first sequel to Halloween. Liked it very much. And, of course, I actually bought this shirt early last year when I first heard that there was going to be a house based on this film at Horror Nights uh, 26. And I went out and got this shirt so I could have a commemorative shirt for the event even before it began, yes. <laughs> well, I am now preparing to begin a whole new series of videos. The history of the event Universal Orlando Halloween Horror Nights 24 which was held at Universal Studios Florida in the year 2014. But I now realize there are some little bits of merchandise from the event in 2013, Halloween Horror Nights 23, What Evil Has Taken Root, that I didn't show you, and I should have. I talked about some of the things, but I didn't show you the lovely pins. Uh, I want to show you, because I have them. Uh, this is here. See, I could have picked this up and showed you instead of using my my iPhone to show you from the app that was used for Halloween Horror Nights 24 what I should have showed you was this one this lovely little pin was of course uh, part of the Legendary Truth merchandise the official Legendary Truth button a little button type pin badge they call them in the United Kingdom rather than pins uh, then of course there was the official pin for the event um, and because even though there was what evil's taken root, it again focused on the Walking Dead. So this was the official event pin. See, it's kind of three-dimensional. It sticks out, showing the uh, showing the lovely uh, zombie for the Walking Dead featured as the event pin. Then they didn't have a special pin for uh, for the annual pass holders that year. Uh, instead, they had something else. If you were an annual pass holder, the special thing that was only for annual pass holders was not a pin that year, but just a, once again, it was a dog tag. And this was the special dog tag, which also, of course, featured the Walking Dead. This was the annual pass holder dog tag. This is annual pass holder there, Halloween Horror Nights 2013 put it back in its little protective little protective baggy you know this little bag oh it still has the price tag six dollars and 95 cents uh, expensive little bastards i'll just stick it back in its little protective baggy it's like one of those little baggies that sometimes contain mysterious white powders i won't say any more that would be naughty and there was one other special pin for the event uh, I showed you at the end of the previous video a special piece of merchandise which was the the uni mini vinyl of Jack the Clown which was the second official Halloween Horror Nights uni mini and they had a uh, as expected when they had accompanying that was a special pin they did the same thing with the uh, with the uni mini 
for the Zombie Boy back in 2012. They had a pin to accompany that. And even earlier in 2013, they had a, a Mardi Gras Union Mini, the sort of Baron Samadhi, uh, Baron Sematia, Baron Lacroix, Baron uh, uh, Criminel. I don't know which one of the Barons it was, but the Voodoo Loa of the Gede, of, of, the, of one of those Barons in the form of a Voodoo doll, and they had a little pin for that figure as well as, as the Muni Mini. But, of course, the special Halloween Horror Nights 2013 limited edition collector's pen to accompany the Jack figure was this little wonderful little cloisonnet pin of, uh, of Jack to, in the shape of the Uni Mini. And so that was nice that they had that as well. So now they got that out of the way, let's jump into 2014. Now, as I have mentioned in many of these previous history videos, <clears throat> that old Scottish saying, you know, the best laid plans are mouse and men off gang of glay, which uh, is kind of a bit of Gaelic at the end. It means that they often go awry, uh, of course, and there's no mice involved because that's some other theme park somewhere else. Yeah, our park. <laughs> not ours, no. no. Not the one that Horror Nights that we're concerned with. We're not going to be not so scary. We're going to be very scary, thank you very much. Yes, but again, art and design, the wonderful people, they make plans for Horror Nights. And another fun saying, you want to make God laugh? Make a plan. <laughs> so that's what happens. So many times they plan something and it just falls through. And once again, we had that happening. Uh, I'm not 100% sure because I've heard, of course, I heard this after the fact. No secret ahead of time, no secret ahead of time uh, uh, <coughs> inside information. No, this was after the fact. And people would, would just tell me after the fact, oh, yeah, we had planned an icon, sort of. And uh, I heard from different people there are different ideas for an icon. Some of it I'm not so sure about because some of it is rumors, and I'm not sure if that was really what they were planning. But the other one I think is more definite. They may have had at different times in the planning different ideas. One that is highly rumored is the icon known as Nathaniel Crow. Now, he had originally been planned way back for the event in 2008. And Michael Aiello actually revealed Crow, I think in early 2015, when he read out the description of Nathaniel Crow and who he was supposed to be. And all about how uh, he had been the fellow who had owned the plot of land where Jack built his Carnival of Carnage back in 2007, and after that was over, he gets cursed. He sees visions of Jack and the caretaker and the storyteller and the director, but not the usher yet, because that hadn't happened, right? And then, and then all these crows come and roots come up from the ground, pumpkin roots that entwine him and bind him, and the little crows come and peck out all his flesh and eyes, and his flesh is replaced with bits of rotting pumpkins, and he turns into a hideous living scarecrow made of roots and a pumpkin head with a gaping maw and a burning candle inside him glowing out through his eye sockets in the skull that has now become part of the twisted sort of like this sort of like this thing yeah yeah a skull skull pumpkin hybrid and his glowing eyes and mouth and nathaniel crow becomes the living embodiment of halloween a nifty idea now there's some clues that people thought crow may have been intended to be the icon that yeah maybe he was for 23 evil taking root right every one of the freaking haunted houses at Halloween Horror Nights 23 had a damn crow in it, or a raven, whichever you want to call it, black birds. And they continued this in 24, in 2014. Just about every house and scare zone, if you looked in the right place, you'd see a little raven sitting somewhere. Uh, I never found the one in Alien vs. Predator, but I was told there's one in there somewhere, and I did see them in all the other houses. And so there was an idea this had something to do with Crow, and even one of the houses had a connection to Crow a Toan, which might have something to do with Crow as well. And maybe there was some idea 
that this might have been the icon. Maybe that was part of the original thinking, but if it had been, if this story is true, it was dropped very quickly and they came up with a different icon. And this story, I think, I have very good reason to believe is much more accurate, that they did plan an icon for 24, and it was a creepy little girl who lived in a mortuary. Cindy? No. A different creepy little girl who lived in a mortuary. In fact, she might have been inspired by the original idea for Cindy back in 2002, who, of course, at that time wore a sort of doll face mask, and it was supposed to be all about her toys in her little evil toy box and all the characters in the scare zones in Islands of Fear back in 2002 were meant to be her little creepy toys and playthings from Marvel action figures and Island Under Siege to dinosaur toys for Jurassic Park Extinction to the little evil nightmare up in the, uh, in the Lost Continent, all of these tweaks and foons were playthings of Cindy's and of course that idea got thrown out and the caretaker was created instead and what was to have been her icon house became the second scary tales house now, that we do know but something like that was planned for 2014 not Cindy who had changed and morphed into the caretaker's pyrokinetic daughter now little fire starter to steal from Stephen King. Oops, don't say that out loud, he might sue. <laughs> no, instead we have a creepy little girl who lives in a mortuary who's obsessed with playthings and dolls and likes to make dolls out of human beings and twists them and turns them into her living playthings, this evil little creepy girl. Now, of course, they did have the house that was to be her icon house, the door house of the damned, but they... Somehow, this idea fell apart. I think, again, maybe the same persons or people above in Comcast or somewhere, the people who never liked the idea of Cindy being an icon, they turned her down twice in 2002, and then again, of course, in 2010. Maybe they still said, no, we don't want this creepy little girl. Even if she's not dead, we don't want this child icon. No, you can't do it. And so they had to tone her down and removed her almost entirely from the house, although she was still visible in one scene. Just one scene. Very briefly, you saw this creepy kid in the dollhouse, but for the most part, it was no longer about her. It was just about the dolls. And the evidence existed for that, because when they first announced Dollhouse of the Damned back in the summer leading up to the events when they did reveal the original houses the original description of the haunted house talked about the girl and mentioned this evil little child and what she did and all of this stuff it's like oh that sounds interesting but then when the event started if you look in the brochure they changed the description it doesn't mention her at all. It says, those who enter risk becoming one of the unfortunate souls with no hope of escape, surviving the malicious dolls who wait inside to be anything but child's play. <laughs> but uh, in the original description on the website, it had said, this, who, it had mentioned the girl herself. But then, before the event started, you went back and read that, and it was different. They had removed, it was what we just read in the brochure. They had changed it and took the girl out of the description of the house. And that leads me to think that they had scrapped the idea of her being the icon early on in the year, but when they had written up the house descriptions for the website, they caught it after it had been released and said, oh, wait, we need to change that because she's not being featured as the focus of that house or of the event anymore. And so they did that. That's my what um, my belief, but I think that's pretty clear evidence that someone was supposed to have a bigger part in the house, and at least in the whole event. At least that's the rumor I heard after the event started, and someone who worked at Universal told me, actually, we were supposed to have an icon, and this is who it was. And it's like, oh, that's interesting. So 
In fact, it may have been a theme and an icon originally planned after all. But by the time the event rolled around, in fact, by the time the website went live in the summer, that was pretty much over and done with. And once again, the event would have no tagline. It would just be Universal Orlando Halloween Horror Nights 24, like it says there. And all of the promotional artwork would feature the IPs featured at the event, primarily The Walking Dead, Halloween, and... Uh, and... Uh, and Alien vs. Predator, those in particular, even though there were other IPs there, uh, those three were featured in all the advertisements and on the brochures and on the billboards and etc. Uh, in fact, the advertisements focused almost entirely on The Walking Dead, but we'll get to that. All right, so the original plans fell through once again. Uh, some of their ideas, at least. <coughs> now, I say there was no catchphrase, although some people have put up you've been warned as the catchphrase, but I never really saw that. It's certainly not on any of the brochures, and on the T-shirts, as someone has pointed out, was something like, so this is what fear tastes like, which is odd. Someone uh, had commented on one of my previous videos about the t-shirts because the one, the house shirt for 23 said, um, fear will eat you alive. And the house shirt for 24 said, so this is what fear tastes like. If it seems to me that liquid fear was, a, was, a, was the blinky drink uh, beverage in 2010. I know what fear tastes like. It tastes rather like a rum runner. Uh, but, uh, but actually, um, actually, it, someone said maybe whoever was making the T-shirt promotions uh, sayings for the T-shirt was hungry at the time. Ooh, had skipped lunch. What about was obsessed with eating something. I'm hungry. Fear will eat you alive. I'm so starving. Mm. All right. So, now, the website, when it came up, well, first of all, let's all get into it. Leaky, leaky, leaks, as always. And I have to confess my own part in it. Of course, uh, I, I got wind of some stuff, and I posted silly videos, which I've, I promise not to do anymore because it's naughty. And uh, I thought, you know, the cryptic clues I had given... Uh, and the year before, I had only given one word. I thought just giving out one word for each one would be enough to, to make it more difficult for people to figure out. And I thought, well, this time I'll do something completely different. And, I, you know, I like going to New York City and seeing shows on the Broadway stage. And I thought, wouldn't it be funny if I did my cryptic performances, singing Broadway show tunes as clues for the haunted houses that I had thought would be there that year. And so I did that, and it got to be lots of fun because after I sang the song, when the houses were revealed, I would then sing a, a, a song with different lyrics. For example, uh, for one of the houses, Halloween, I sang the song Home from the Wiz, you know, the actual song with the original lyrics. Then, when Halloween was revealed as a haunted house, Officially, I then proceeded to come back on with a decryptic performance, as I called it, where I sang uh, with different lyrics I had made up, singing Home from the Wiz with lyrics about Michael Myers, you know. When I think of home, I think of a place where there's blood overflowing. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that sort of thing. Rather creepy. Uh, I thought I had fun with that. I had a lot of fun with that. Although, again... <sighs> As I said, I, I would learn the following year especially that there's no point because by the time I put out all of these so-called clues, people had already been hearing the same rumors and buzz that had been floating leaks about what the houses would be, and they already had their own little list of all the haunted houses that year, and they could just say, okay, this song means that one, this song means that one, this song means that one, and they figure it all out, 
and boom, you no longer have any mystery at all. It was counterproductive. It didn't work. So that's one of the reasons why I don't do that anymore. I no longer post those cryptic videos anymore. In fact, I'm not even going to post not cryptic videos this year. There'll be no cryptic or not cryptic clues posted as videos this year. Mm. Buck. Mm. So where was I? Oh, yes. Uh, so I did that. And again, people figured it out too quickly because people apparently had already heard stuff themselves and had formed their own list, and this was buzzing around, obviously. But there were bigger leaks that got to the general public. Big, huge, big, big leaks, awful leaks. First of all, it happened that uh, some of the intellectual property rights holders uh, had prepared... Well, first of all, one was from Dust Till Dawn. Now, this is not the, uh, not the movie that Quentin Tarantino and Robert Rodriguez did back in the 90s, I think it was. This was a new television program based on those movies that uh, Robert Rodriguez had created for his El Rey television program. And Rodriguez and the cast of the program did a video where they talked about the program and how happy they were that it was coming to Horror Nights as a haunted house. And this was a little promotional video. And it was supposed to be released on the, uh, on, on the YouTube channel for Horror Nights in Orlando, uh, or, the, or the Orlando, uh, uh, um, or Universal Orlando uh, uh, Horror, um, uh, YouTube channel, because they don't have a separate one. The one in Hollywood has a separate one just for Horror Nights, but Horror Night videos show up on the regular Universal Studios Florida, or Universal Orlando Resort, I should say, YouTube channel. It showed up there um, before the announcement. Somehow, uh, the video had been made and, 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 and published. It was supposed to be published privately, you see. And then when the house announcement was made, they could switch private to public and it would appear for everyone to see. But... Somebody at the Universal Social Media team, I have no idea who, and I hope they didn't get sacked or in too much trouble, when they put the video up, uploaded the video to YouTube, they forgot to click private. And because they did that, it was publicly published for everyone to see before uh, marketing and publicity had authorized the release of that information. So we learned about From Dust Till Dawn before it was originally announced. So, Uh-oh, oops! And that wasn't the only one that happened in 2014 because they were doing a house based on Halloween, the original 1978 film directed by John Carpenter. Uh, they were going to do that house that year, and they had contacted a website that is all about the Halloween films, an official website that promotes all of the Halloween films and the original franchise and even some of the Rob Zombie ones. I forget what it's called, HalloweenMovies.com or something like that. And they had told them about it so they could promote the haunted house in Orlando. And I think they had one in Hollywood that year, or maybe not. But anyway, they had one in, I don't remember Hollywood's houses exactly as well as I do Orlando because I didn't go to the event in Hollywood now, obviously. But I'll have to go back and check. But anyway, in Orlando, uh, especially, they, they talked about it. And again, somehow there was a goof. And they released some of their stuff on their website about the house at Horror Nights before it got announced in Orlando officially. Because they wanted to do a contest where you could win prizes to go there. And it was already on their website. People said, aha, we see here. And so that got leaked that way. So there were a couple of big oops. Uh, what happens when you get third parties involved and sometimes things get screwed up. And so stuff got released earlier than they had intended. Oh, my. Hmm. So there were a couple of major leaks about those two haunted houses. Now, about the website. I'm really sad to say that this was the first year the websites really descended into utter genericness. The last gasp 
<coughs> of having any sort of little nifty clues to tell you about what the houses might be before they were revealed officially on a Horror Nights official website was in 2013. The PS blog, when they opened the backpack and pulled things out, which were clues for a house that had not yet been revealed. Now, they did reveal houses earlier than usual in 2013, starting with Cabin in the Woods. But that was the last time they had any sort of little clues. And, of course, it had been years since they did those wonderful, intricate websites with things you could click on that would slowly tease the event over several weeks and give you some clues about different houses without revealing exactly what they were until the big reveal happened. That, of course, was long over with, and the PS blog was the last time we got anything even remotely, re re uh, remotely you know, the Evil Takes Root blog was the last time we had anything remotely uh, resembling that ever, and that was in 2013. In 2014, there was nothing even slightly like that. The closest thing you got to any kind of a tease came from Mike Aiello on his Twitter and Instagram feeds, Horror Nights ORL. And sadly, even that's gone now because Mike doesn't do that anymore. It's gone to the social media team from from uh, Orlando, so uh, at, at the Universal Orlando Resort. Social media team does that, Twitter now. So there's not much left nowadays except for John Murdy in, Ho in Hollywood for getting any kind of official clue before the actual reveal. But in... Uh, 2014, all you could get was maybe some pictures from inside houses that maybe Michael Ayala would post on Instagram, but you didn't get much of that even. So the website was really generic and, you know, didn't give much. And then when houses were revealed, they came up with, of course, the intellectual properties first, and then eventually they would reveal the original houses all at once, and then the scare zones pretty much at the same time in shows. And that would be the big final update on the website. So the only updates you got were the actual house reveals. And again, this happened a lot earlier. In fact, even earlier than the year before. And when they started updating, I forget which was first. It might have been uh, Halloween or From Dust to Dawn or Alien vs. Predator. But one of those, and I think it was Dracula Untold, but one of those was revealed first. And then eventually all of the other IPs were revealed as time went by. So that was the website that year. Uh, again, not as fun, but you did get early house reveals, and that's become a trend that's continued every year. In fact, last year we had the earliest ever official reveals of houses when they revealed Texas Chainsaw back in April last year. So, wow, they're getting really early. In fact, it, I, I wouldn't be able to do any cryptic clues if I wanted to because they reveal them earlier than I would reveal those myself. So there you go. Now, that being said, there was something else I forgot to bring up about plans that fell through. There was one other thing about Halloween Horror Nights 24 I forgot to mention. There was another house because we did get some code names for the houses and one of the code names for the houses in Orlando was Ritual and that house was never seen. Because uh, Mike did tell us what the code words were for the various houses. Ritual was an original house that might have been in Soundstage 22. And it was supposed to be, from what I've heard, uh, the scuttlebutt and after the fact, but very little information has been given about it. But apparently it has something to do with a little boy living in a house where some terrible things had happened many, many years before. Some sort of supernatural event, and the house is rumored to be haunted. The little boy is living in the house, and there's something, something very nasty living under his bed. Now, what exactly that thing is, we don't know. A boogeyman? An El Kakoi type of boogeyman, maybe? Or, more likely, a demon. It sounds a bit like Insidious, but not 
directly adapted from the film, more like some kind of original house with a similar theme about a little boy or a child and some sort of demonic beast lurking under the bed. And uh, I've heard different stories, but I've also heard somebody say the name of the house was to have been called Nightmares. I don't know if that's true, but I know the rumor is true because I asked TJ Manorino about it straight up. Because that year, 2014, was the one year I was able to attend the press party for Halloween Horror Nights. And I, and I was at the press party as the plus one of Charles Bremer, who at that time uh, ran his Designing the Fear blog. He doesn't do it anymore. It has different ownership nowadays. But at the time, he ran it, and he got media privileges that year. And he took me to the party, that wonderful party they held on opening night for the media as his plus one. And I said, I, and I went up to TJ and said, what can you tell me about the ritual code word house that you didn't do this year? And he says, ah, <laughs> I can't tell you anything about it because we may still do the house one of these days. So I really can't give you any details. But he did confirm it was real. The house did exist, or it was planned. So there was going to be a different house that year. And uh, not a ninth house. This would have, they did, uh, they did From Dust Till Dawn instead. Originally, they had planned to do either From Dust Till Dawn or Roanoke. And when they decided not to do that Nightmare's house, they did both <laughs> uh, Roanoke and uh, From Dust Till Dawn. And, uh, and and nightmares went bye-bye. But Manorino confirmed that that was not just a rumor. That there was going to be such a house. It got scrapped. But, as he said, he can't give out too much information exactly what the details of the house were because they may still be doing it someday. They haven't yet, but who knows? Maybe it might come up this year. Hmm. And that's all the time I have for this first video on Horror Nights 24.